Hello everybody, thanks for checking in with me today. If you're interested to see how I've changed this old burgundy velvet unsellable chair into something with a little bit more modern color trends and turned it into this beautiful piece, stick with me. I'll show you the steps that I've taken. Hi, my name is Packy, creator of Pack Rats Shack. I upcycle furniture, build out of pallet wood, finish interior spaces, and have a vendor booth for my creations. Welcome to my world. So as typical, we're going to start this project with a good cleaning with um, simple green and a bucket of water. I'm not going to be filling in anything and smoothing it out. We're not sanding it enough to do all that. We're just scuff sanding it enough to take a, a layer of a new finish and kind of try to even the tones out a little bit. I think this is a 180 that I have wrapped around a sponge and it just helps. to keep some rigidity, rigidity while sanding. Just putting it around the foam. You can see the tannins and stuff bleeding through, which is why I decided to go dark. I would have uh, liked to have done a lighter, like a cream color that would go good with the tea rose, but I just knew we'd have problems with bleed through, so I ended up going darker so it wouldn't be loads and loads of steps with still problems of bleed through. So sometimes the piece kind of dictates. What it needs rather than what you want to do. I mean, when you're considering your time and financial amount that you want to put into it as well. It all needs to be taken into consideration. And I did not need this one to keep going on and on with bleed through. And when I'm talking about bleed through, I'm talking about this. This isn't dirt per se. This is red color. It's from the sanding, but the red color is also bleed through and coming off of the wood. I could wash this over and over 20 times and it would still make the rag this red. Basically, like 
the dust comes off, the dye from the red color of wood doesn't come off. So you'd be having a problem to try to make this a lighter color. It'd probably take three to four coats of a ceiling kind of color. Whether you're going shellac, straight up shellac, or some of the other products like Boss from Dixie. I'm sure Annie Sloan's got one for priming wood before painting. But I just didn't want to deal with all of that on this particular set of chairs. There's two perfect little holes back here that I did not notice on the other one, and I never noticed it on this one before. So I might go ahead and seal those as well. I'm just going to use this stainable wood filler that can be uh, sanded back down after it's dry. those two holes could be it doesn't look like it doesn't look like an insect infestation problem it looks like somebody had put something on here at one point Okay, we're getting ready to paint the upholstery now. I've already gotten the piece cleaned up and the upholstery swept. We are using Dixie Bell's Chalk Mineral Paint in Tea Rose, and I've watered it down. Just, um, it's, it's no ratio. It's just, you're basically wanting to make a thick dye. I mean, it's probably the thickness of cream. Like if you are baking things and you know what cream, how much thicker cream is than milk. So that's about the thickness of that. We're going to mist our fabric. And then we just slowly start to work the paint within the fabric. It's not going to necessarily be and at this point yeah there's fabric all the way around these uh little beads these little nail decorative nail heads so we're going to go ahead and get the paint everywhere that we can and we're just going to try to work it in we don't want like if you accidentally uh put it down and there's a lot there we don't want to leave it like that. We want to try to thin it out and just make several thin coats of paint. So if you have a spot like that, you're just going to work it. So that's why I have this natural bristle brush that's really, really firm.
I ran low on one and got another one and I decided just to pour some of the paint from this one into that one and add the water so this one can be my watered down version. But that was a little too watery. Okay, as you saw the paint going on, you could tell the transformation already getting started, but as it sits there, it darkens up slightly. We're going to go ahead and walk away and let this dry, and then we'll put on a second coat. Now we're ready to go in for a second coat of the uh, chalk paint to the fabric. Before we do that, we're going to loosen up what's already there. Velvet is different than regular upholstery, so using a sander or like a sand pad or a scratch pad doesn't work. So I just use a flat um, putty knife or scraper and just rub across the fabric in a couple of different directions. Especially pay attention to any areas where you might have the paint a little thicker than you wanted it. And you can tell that it feels softer again after you do that. to go in and do a second coat of chalk paint. So this is after the second coat on this one and there was three coats done to this one. They look awful close but in person you can see more reds and darkness showing through on this still. So we're going to go ahead and proceed and do a third coat of chalk paint to this one. I like always starting in this position because therefore that front cushion is not wet yet so you wouldn't want to start on top turn it over and work on the back side if that was already wet because then that would mat down that front area we're going to start the same with loosening up this last coat
go ahead and hand these two holes back that were filled. We don't want the rag rubbing along that too much or it will start to rub off the color because we haven't sealed it in and it is just chalk paint which once you get it wet it reactivates. So we do need to seal that in but that's going to be in a later step. I'm going to go back to this Minwax wood finish. It is called semi-transparent color stain, but if you don't wipe it off like I did in the other one, it actually is pretty solid. So um, that's what we're going to do. What I like about doing this on um, these chairs is this product just glides and then just looks so smooth. And with a small brush like this you can get in all the little nooks and crannies without getting it on anything else. So around the upholstery, I just pull back and get that just below and then pull it upwards. But you see how smooth that goes on? And then you actually can get this Kind of up there on that lip towards the nails a little bit. Some areas are a little thin and they don't quite catch it the first time through as other areas do. So I will let this set overnight and hit it one more time tomorrow for a second coat of this uh, semi-transparent finish. But you can see how solid it looks if you're not wiping off the excess and it dries really hard. Okay. 
So here's the two chairs side by side. This one's finished. This one's the one we're working on, but you can see how close they're getting. There's still a few more details to do to this chair. I want to do a second coat because there's some thin areas on the uh, black finish. And then we're going to let that dry, come back, and do a sealant for everything. And then after that dries, we're going to come back with the uh, silver gilding wax and go and top off all of the nail heads. So there we have it. Should be solid now after it dries and the shine is the same. I can uh, look over it and make sure there's no missed areas. But when I come back from my work day, I'm going to use a, a sealant that's good for the velvet and the uh, wood. So I'll show you that. So this has been able to dry all day. I'm going to just take a real quick look at it. Make sure we've got um, all of the thin areas where there was still wood tones showing through covered. I'm just going to kind of pivot it into the light in different directions so I can try to see everything. I actually see some wood tones through here, so I'm going to have to get that. Okay, so for the fabric, we're going to move it one more time just to I mean it really doesn't feel that bad or that stiff it's just that this will loosen up the fibers on the exterior most part of the velvet so just move it one more time just to try to get it as soft as possible. In a tutorial that I watched with a previous project where I was doing a chalk paint to a um, different kind of fabric, not a velvet, then in that tutorial, I think it was Jonathan Mendez was um, and it's with Painted Love I believe um, he said that after the um, painting is done you always have to use a wax and it softens up the, the fabric this is a velvet it's harder to work in a wax I so I was thinking that this um, clear matte spray wax would be the best way to work in a wax to get that softness back. So basically um, this is the version that I'm going to use for wax to help protect the chalk paint on here now and then it'll help also make it a little bit more um, I think soft to the touch as well. And it doesn't matter if this goes over and gets on the furniture because it's a good seal for the furniture um, wood as well but I'm just going to try to get it in there 
and then kind of work it in a little bit but not too much because I don't want to push the velvet down while it's wet. Just want to try to make sure some of it gets in there though. And then with which I'm going to go back and get the wood eventually, but we have different places that are drying. So I'm just going to make sure we don't have it um, like piling up on the wood. Um, you can see where when I was touching up with the black paint here and or the black semi transparent stain that I did get some on the nail heads that'll all be covered up and I'm not worried about it as long as it's not glopped up in a way that'll leave a mark after we put the next layer on there so since it's all smooth I didn't worry about it I only wiped it off in one section where right away because I saw that it just was like a glob that was raised and would have left lines so anyway this is basically all we're doing with the fabric in order to seal it and have it softer and can see that it, the the places I touched up are still a little bit wet so I'm just going to wait for the uh, black to dry a little bit more and I'm going to basically do the same thing with the easy peasy spray wax and um, then we'll get moving on to covering up these nail heads. So all the finish on the wood should be dry. I'm going to go through and go ahead and spray it with this easy peasy which is a Dixie Bell product. Okay, so that's it for sealing and protecting. Making sure there's no over spray. And I'm going to let that dry for a little while and then I'll be back to do the uh, silver gilding wax on the nail heads. hello everybody thank you guys so much for watching i have one big announcement before i get into all the usual stuff um we are switching our upload schedule to every wednesday and sunday so it's easier for us to maintain and it's less 
I mean more time in between releases. So thank you for being patient with us and we really appreciate you guys' support. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you have any thoughts, any thoughts, comment down below. We love to hear your opinions. We love to hear your ideas. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell if you haven't already. Thank you guys again so much for watching. With that said, stay safe out there.